Hi everyone. Today we are going to be dealing with a question that has been asked multiple times by multiple people. And it's how do you judge when it's safe to lane change, um, particularly from slip roads. Now I might be able to do a little bit here. Um, if we look in this mirror, I'm going to try and ensure that I have the full width of the vehicles next to me before I emerge. So this uh, four-wheel drive is coming past, but have a look at the black private hire. Thank you very much, sir. That's very good of you. So I didn't expect to do that that quickly. However, that is one big part to it. And I'll explain this now. I'll take the opportunity to explain it now. What I was after seeing there was the full width of the vehicle that in the lane to my right hand side whether it be lane one on a motorway and I'm joining from a slip or like we had in that situation I was in lane one and trying to move to lane two and what I was looking for was the car in this right hand side to be fully visible or in other words so I could see the full width of it in this right hand door mirror now there's other aspects to it as well you can't just say, well, I could see the full width if the vehicle from behind is catching really quickly. For example, I could be doing 30 miles an hour on this road and you have a motorbike that's um, doing 60. It might be far away. However, it wouldn't be a good time to actually lane change or move across. However, you could have, for example, a lorry that's next to you that's reasonably close. However, what would you do if that lorry was then dropping away? So I'm just going to show us again. I can see the full width comfortably of this BMW, so I know I've got plenty of room to move out. So that's the first part. I wasn't going to deal with that section first, but it's just fell upon the video. So hopefully you understand what I'm getting at with that. So that's one aspect to it. The next little part is my mirror use. I'm going to be looking mirror and ahead, mirror and ahead, mirror and ahead, mirror and ahead. People too often stare in this right mirror. Um, and I'm going to use the opportunity of the lane merging to try and have a little look at this and just have a little look at my head movement. Okay, I'm going to be looking mirror and ahead, mirror and ahead. Is this taxi going to hold back again? He's dropping away so we can see the full width. Perfect. Thank you again, buddy. So you can't just stare in this right mirror when you're trying to get out. You've got to be looking there and in front, there and in front, there and in front. Another thing that is really important as well is a forward movement in your seat. What that also does is allows you to see further to the side because there is a danger of cars, especially when you're emerging onto a motorway, from lanes further out coming back. And what that allows you to do by leaning forward is to see a further view out that way. It also allows you when you leave, lean forward to use your peripheral vision to see further over. So you sort of, it's not a full blind spot check, it's not a full over the shoulder check, but it is a sideways glance that you're trying to use to try and get an idea of what's to that further side. So pull yourself in your seat, looking in your mirror and ahead, mirror and ahead, mirror in your head, and adjusting your seating position to cover all of the bases. Make sure you know exactly who's to that side. So we've dealt with the full width of the car. We've dealt with how you should be using your mirrors. The first thing that I was going to deal with was the correct use of gears. Now, this is a massive part to it. Changing speed is something that people don't do very well. I'm just saying thanks to this uh, private eye because he's let me out twice. Good man, thank you so much, sir. Um, the correct use of gears is something that people don't do very well. What they tend to do is just arrive at a speed where they feel comfortable, and that's not the key. When you're trying to emerge 
or fit in from a slip road, or in fact on lane change, try and match your speed to that of the traffic that you're trying to fit into. So I'm gonna do a right emerge onto this motorway. It just gives me another option to come back round to the same sort of area so we can have another go. So when you're emerging, build your speed up so it's similar to that of the traffic you're trying to fit into. If you're doing 40 and the lorry's on the inside lane and maybe doing up to 56 miles an hour, maybe 60 miles an hour, the traffic on the inside's doing 60, that's 20 miles an hour difference. So all these spaces that are occurring are instantly being eroded because you're 20 miles an hour slower than the traffic that you're trying to fit into. I know that's one of the problems with, with people when they can't emerge safely, or they feel as though they can't emerge safely. It's often a speed issue. So you have to be ready to change your speed. A change in speed means a flexible gear. All gearboxes are different. You need to be in a gear that's flexible for your car. Now, if I was doing this, um, I'd be accelerating, obviously, to suit this bend, but now I'm going to use third gear for a long while, and I'm going to try and accelerate as close to 60 plus as I can into fourth now, and that fourth is a flexible gear. It's not really low, and I'm going to lean and look and mirror and ahead, and there's a big space. I can see the full width of the car, and the other important thing is to use all of this slip lane. Don't try and get out too early. Now, what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to have another little slide off because there's another one a little bit further down. It's uh, not onto a motorway, it's onto a 40 miles an hour limit. So what I had with the gear there was a flexible gear. It allowed me to accelerate briskly, but you have to adjust your speed to look and fit in with the traffic and it's not just behind it's ahead as well people always forget to look ahead if the one in front slowing down you've got to slow down so here I'm gonna do the same thing no one's around me looking at the speed of these in front a flexible gear I'm just gonna to drop to third I'm gonna put the signal on and the red car I can see the full width little sideways check and it didn't have to do much then okay just going to find a way to turn back round and then we'll go and have another go at some more in a second. So I've been able to do a quick U-turn. Um, I'm not going to join back onto a motorway but I'm going to have another go onto a slip road a little touch further. So as you can see these three parts to it, I've done them in a different order than I was going to but we said about the full width um, we said about to make sure it's not catching, if possible, um, it's dropping away. If it was catching, it might be a case of slowing down, letting the car that's catching past, and then building your speed back up again to then keep up with it at the correct distance to hopefully fit in with the gap behind. I know that sounds pretty complicated, but hopefully you're following what I'm talking about. So we've had a fairly simple couple of emerges. Uh, people haven't been catching. But is that down to my speed that I was emerging at? Well, probably. Um, and that's the main thing for me, that people don't do well enough. They just go at one speed and expect everyone else to accommodate them. And that's not how it happens. So I'm going to do a quick lane change here. So I'm just going to put my signal on. I'm going to see this Volvo. That Volvo instantly closed the space down and we do have to deal with that but notice that's fine it's no issues all I'll do is just wait for the next gap and that's what you've got to be ready to do because there's people like the Volvo who will just close the space down as soon as they see that signal to wait at a set of red lights for even longer but we're not going to cure everyone who's like that I know my viewers have seen me try over the past um, past number of years. However, it is something that's stuck and we're not going to change attitudes that easily. But always be ready to change your mind. If someone's not going to let you in, Sam, take the gap after. Submit, doesn't matter. Okay. 
So a little touch further, we come to uh, another emerge from a slip road and we're going to try and put all of these things together and hopefully the traffic's going to be a little bit heavier. Are there any things that you would like to ask on this subject that I haven't covered? If so, stick them down in the comments and I'll try and get back to it. But I'm going to try and be as thorough as I can. It's actually the second attempt that I've had at this video. I had a quick go yesterday and for me, I looked at the video when I'd done it last time and I thought, well, um, it's not as much information as we probably need. If people are struggling with this, the bit that I did yesterday probably wasn't as in-depth. So bear with me, we're going to have another go here. Again, the road narrows two into one, so I'm glancing, no one's there. Glance, 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 rather than stare. And we've got an emerge sign here on the right, so I've got to fit in with the traffic on the main road. So I'm trying to match my speed to that of the lorry. Now I'm building a little, I'm leaning forward, looking in the mirror ahead, the lorry's fine, no one's from the outside coming back in, and I don't even need to signal. So unfortunately, we've had an easy one there again where I didn't have to adjust my speed. But I hope you understand these three sections and the three steps that are going to help you successfully sort this out. So remember, we've got the full width, not catching. We've got the use of the mirror, glancing, mirror ahead, mirror ahead, mirror ahead, leaning forward, further side, sideways glance to make sure no one's coming back. And then we've got our adjustment of a speed, which means a flexible gear, enough to get us going and change your speed and be ready to adjust if someone closes that space down be ready to back off and the sooner you back off when you see someone close the space down the more time you have with the people in front now let's have a look. last little look this lorry in front's quite slow so i'm gonna put my signal on and ask and that one's um now what's the lorry doing he's holding back so i'm gonna pop us out thank you so hopefully you were able to see that lorry driver was nice and kind um, not necessarily saying the Asda driver wasn't he was reasonably close he probably did have a chance to back off and let me go um, however he chose to come past which is actually good in a way as well because then he's cleared and he's gone so don't think everyone in this scenario is going to be like the Volvo that we saw a little bit earlier um, to close that space down on purpose sometimes people do need to clear to actually help you as well so um, be ready to adjust your speed now i hope that helps i hope i've covered everything because it's quite a complicated subject but like i said if there's any other points that you want me to cover by comments let me know and if there's any other questions you'd like to see in this series please ask them as well thank you very very much for paying attention hope it helps I'll see you soon.